Unemployment in South Africa is expected to continue to rise as the forecast fourth wave of COVID-19 infections towards the year end could scupper any attempts to create new jobs. Data from Statistics South Africa shows that jobs in the formal non-agricultural sector shrank by 86,000 in the second quarter of 2021. And this brought the total number of persons employed in the formal non-agricultural sector to approximately 9.57 million. Now, Stats SA's quarterly employment statistics survey shows that the total employment fell by 86,000 or uh, just under 1% uh, quarter on quarter from March to June. Dr. Lungile Mondi is a senior lecturer at the School of Economics and Business Science at Wits University and joins us now via Zoom. Thanks so much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Good evening, Good evening to our listeners, uh, Peter. Thank you for having me. All right. This unemployment story, I guess, is a lot of what we've expected, partly because of COVID-19, but also partly because of a, an economy that was already in critical care. In reality, Peter, this is, in South Africa, is a historical phenomenon um, based on an economy of exclusion uh, under the white regime uh, through the homeland system that, that marginalized black women particularly uh, into the reserves, the so-called Bantu stands. And unfortunately, in the transition period between 1990 and 1994, uh, the ANC uh, basically uh, gave away uh, and capitulated uh, to the white regime and allowed the development of our economy uh, to be path dependent uh, on an economy that was based for a few white minority. Therefore, the fact that the economy has continued uh, to create fewer jobs, uh, absorb less, uh, it speaks to the reality of the white concentration of economy, a lack of vision by the black regime of the ANC, and a continuous marginalization of black people, particularly women. So what should have been done right at the beginning, uh, that by now perhaps we might have had a, uh, a completely reformed economic landscape? Peter, we all know uh, that uh, hindsight, hindsight is the best teacher. Mm. So maybe what we should be looking is what to do now going forward. Mm. Um, what needs to be done to, to going forward is an acceptance that we need the restructuring of the economy. What I mean by that, uh, Peter, it means that uh, given mm. uh, that many countries are focusing on local capabilities, and creating uh, economies that will develop and advance that people. Uh, South Africa should be adopting that. It's encouraging uh, the DTIC under Patel uh, and the Minister of Finance under Kodongwane is starting to speak the right language that we need to localize to support the creation of infrastructure that integrate South Africa to the rest of the continent. And in doing so, uh, will strengthen the game of Africans. Uh, but particularly given that we're still well endowed with resources in Africa. Uh, so this is time for us really to make the African continental free trade agreement real as African. And therefore the role that we play as universities is to strengthen uh, the knowledge uh, and the creativity in the engineering side to ensure that we build a stronger infrastructure, where we empower resilient people, we ensure that no one in Africa is left behind. Why is Asia so advanced? Why is the Americas in the North so advanced? Why is Europe so advanced? It's because they focus on their own. So this is Africa's time and South Africa should take the lead to drive localization and look internally within the continent and drive that African continental integration for the benefit of all Africans. Will that happen quickly, though? Because, you know, there's, we, we, we've got people... Yeah. It is a process. We realize that they are, they are constrained. I mean, being led by a government in South Africa that is not so dissimilar to the one uh, in Zimbabwe. We know that the ANC uh, will appoint 
uh, those of uh, of its own, whether they're capable or not, is irrelevant. Even their court corrupt their hands in the team. Nothing will be done, as we've seen with the, with the re report that was released today, uh, implicating the, uh, the former minister and those around him. So we know that story. So therefore, it's in our hands, as Mandela called, that we we in in the education space, uh, those in civil society. Uh, we really put pressure on the state to do the right thing because this government lay, led by National Liberation Movement, they are too inwardly focused and they see this opportunity as their time to eat, mm -hmm. as we have seen with the ANC under Zuma um, and the destruction of infrastructure that continues today even under Ramaphosa. So you're saying that as we focus on COVID-19 and strategies to kickstart the economy, we're actually missing the point uh, of what the real problems are. Well, the, the bigger problem is political, Peter, mm. that when African leaders are preoccupied with their pockets and, uh, and being uh, in power until Jesus comes back, um, without necessarily looking at the strength of what they have, I mean, we know that the country, South Africa, is well endowed with financial resources, uh, very strong financial sector. Um, it's got skills, um, even though they're not within the ANC. So not looking outside the party, not putting the interest of South Africa and Africa first, but putting the interest of the political leaders who go to hospitals in Russia and other countries. You're missing the point. This is the case that I'm talking about, Peter. That we need to work harder uh, as voters, uh, as civil society, those of us in the education space, to really push the agenda that this is South Africa and Africa's time. We need leaders that are going to put people first, that are going to work across the space, not only with business, not only with trade unions, but with the majority that are unemployed, as you see in South Africa and the rest of the frontline state, where there's massive unemployment, and yet the elite lives as though a life continues as usual. This is time for us to work together, to build institutions, to mobilize funding internally, and drive local development that integrates with the rest of the continent. If history is anything to go by, this kind of um, inequality, unemployment rising is a recipe for disaster. I mean, one would Absolutely. predict that social unrest is almost inevitable. Well, in fact, even that social unrest, Peter, we've seen it elsewhere that, you know, a social unrest, should, we should not even be encouraging it because we know that it is a zero-sum game. We've seen it in many countries whereby social unrest uh, result in a failed state. And then what you have, you've got militias. Uh, uh, we saw a little part, a little, uh, a little bit of it in the recent insurrection in Natal, where certain sections of communities, uh, because of a failing state to enforce the rule of law, um, decided to take the law into their own hands by blocking their own areas, by, uh, in the process, killing innocent people. Because what happens is that social unrest, uh, a lack of rule of law, leads to anarchy. I don't want this, our country to go there. I don't want our region to go there. That is why we have to push for accountability and ensure that we return back to the rule of law and focus on investment of, on infrastructure. Uh, those of us in the education space have said, uh, focus on building skills, on empowering our people, more importantly for business, to localize most of the things that you can do locally. And within the continent, we've got now close to a billion people. Therefore, it can be done given that we're not linked, given that many of our countries don't have food security, many of our countries are emerging into the black middle class, so they need white goods. So these are the opportunities that remain for an industrialization strategy that is linking all value chains across the continent for benefit of African people so that black Africa can reassert itself in the world and reclaim its pride of civilization, which it led centuries ago and lost that competitive capabilities because of its own internal problems of intense war and therefore exposed itself to the Europeans who colonized us. 
what can we do in the very short term? Because we've got a threat of a fourth wave on the horizon. But Peter, we have to vaccinate. I mean, I'm surprised that people conveniently, they claim because they're Africans, as you can hear, my tone has been pro-Africa, but there are those Africans who suddenly claim uh, black uh, medicine and therefore are refusing to vaccinate. We're saying that you can use that medicine, but please do vaccinate, because what you don't want to do is to put pressure on an already failing infrastructure that we all know in our hospitals. So let's vaccinate. That will allow us then uh, to open up the economy, get tourism back, get the service sector going. We have seen, Peter, today that Bloomberg released countries that have done the right thing, where leadership in countries like Ireland, where the leaders in Ireland decided that this was a national priority, let's get everyone vaccinated. And in doing so, they've been able to open up their economies. And therefore, today, Ireland is, uh, is looking for, for people to work in various sectors. And South Africa, uh, given that the statistics that we're talking about earlier, shows us that we are really going to have more people unemployed than those employed. Therefore, there's agency to open up our economy, and we can do that by getting everyone vaccinated and in the process open up and ensure that public spaces, you have to produce that vaccination card so that we don't uh, continue reinfecting our people. If we do that, Peter, arguably it will be faster for us to now focus on employment as well as deepening um, localization as we work towards an Africa we want in 2063. All right. You've uh, been mentioning localization quite a bit. I'm just wondering, where are the low-hanging fruit? I mean, if we see uh, manufacturing um, uh, is one of the big, and construction, one of the uh, biggest hits in terms of unemployment, and these sectors are very dependent on a larger economy to move forward, where are the low-hanging fruit that we can start to focus to, to try and kick-start the economy? Uh, Peter, we, uh, some of us working with business, uh, we did some work called Business for uh, South Africa, B4 S8, for the number, the figure. And in that, we identified the high impact sectors uh, for African integration. And we identified um, a petroleum, uh, petroleum products as one area given the endowment in part of the African continent, and Nigeria being uh, one of the biggest uh, exporters of petroleum uh, in the continent. Food, of course, remains a very big opportunity in the value chain um, of the food sector. More importantly, uh, Peter, uh, is equipment. Um, and lastly, of course, is motor cars, because most of the African continent imports second cars. Um, and those that have got money, like my Nigerian uh, colleagues, will import fully built uh, new American cars. So there is that potential of these high impact opportunities using Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, and others where there is competitiveness and through the value chain, distributing the value chain across our African countries. And then you go down, Peter, to other areas where we can then uh, lean on uh, on on these three sectors. We already know, Peter, that the three major sectors where South African companies and many Africans are dominant in the services sector. That is uh, the ICT sector. We've got very strong African uh, players, uh, the retail sector and the banking sector. So are very strong. But the others, Peter, uh, of the growing middle class, where the clothing and textile, given the design capabilities uh, of many Af young Africans in Kenya uh, and many other countries in Benin, etc. So I'm saying, Peter, that with that one billion, we can do this. Uh, as Americans will say, with localization, you've, we've got this. So let's get going. Let's think African. Let's think linkages. Let's think African continental free trade area. Let's put out corrupt politicians and let's work together for a better life for all Africans towards our 2063 goal. 
Dr. Nomkile Mondi, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so, so much indeed for joining us. Uh, your insights always, always greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Good evening.